Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to talk about text styles, text sizes, and text colors. Part of what all of those different macros are is a category of things within Harlow called changers. Now, hopefully you've been watching this video series in sequence, moving from video to video to video. But if you haven't, quick review of why this is an important term. So as we saw when we worked with the button macro, the button macro works with links or macros that produce links, which is an important idea when we work with the button macro. We saw that we could combine the button macro with the link rerun macro with the set macro or any other macros in that sequence, creating layers upon layers upon layers. Changer macros work very similarly in that they can be chained together. We can change one thing and change another thing and change another thing and then create an entire style for text we might want to appear within a passage or even future passages and chain them all together, creating change after change after change. So let's look through some of these similar macros and then we'll discuss how they can be changed together where all of the changes can work together. So let's first look at changer as a kind of macro within Harlow. So are, there are some macros that produce links. We've seen a large number of them like link, link rerun and others like that. We've also now started to think about macros working together with other macros by understanding what they do, or in other words, what they produce as a result. So the three macros covered here, text style, text color, text size, all change things. So these are called changers. There's a whole category of macros within Harlow that work in this way, many of which we'll cover as part of looking at changers within Harlow itself. So let's look at text style. So if we want things to change, the style of the text to change, there are many different possibilities, much more than I've ever covered within this passage. And I encourage people to go look at the Harlow documentation for a full listing of them. There's a large number of them. But in this case, we have things like non, italic, bold, underlined, double underlined, wavy underlined, and there are many, many others. But notice in particular, italic and bold and underlined. Well, we know from our previous knowledge of how Harlow works that we can use other special symbols to achieve the same text presentation effect. Can't we do that? In fact, if we were to select up here, we could go bold, italic, strike through, superscript, and access more styles. So the use of changers, and particularly text style, allow us to, instead of writing special symbols, do macros to achieve the same thing. Now, at first glance, this may seem a little bit strange. Why would we need symbols to do something we could also do with a macro or macro the same thing we do with symbols? Because there might be some cases where we're writing text and we want to use symbols for that purpose. We literally select it, jump at the menu, select bold or emphasis or strong emphasis, and we're done. There might be some other cases where code or text or content is generated programmatically or generated by code, that is. In those cases, we might want to set some changers up, like text style, text size, text color, and apply it to things that are generated on the fly or generated part of the story. And this is where understanding different macros and what they produce becomes incredibly important. So we have text style. So let's go ahead and run from example two, build and play, and notice normal, emphasis, strong emphasis, or what we call it, italics or bold, underlined, double underlined, wavy underlined. And again, there are many, many others. And please consult the Harlow documentation. I didn't want to include the, the dozen or so within a single passage. So we've got text style, changing the style of a text. And again, most of those we can also do with special symbols, but now we can now do with a macro. So let's move over to text color. Text color works in a very similar way. Text style changes the style, text color changes the color. And we've already seen this when we work with the meter macro. We needed to know a color, green or red or whatever. So in this case, there are a number of named colors within Harlow and the documentation is a good source to figure out what these all are. And we can immediately use these right here, red and green and gray. So let's go ahead and change over to example three, build and play. So example three, red, green and gray. Okay, fantastic. So we've got text style and we've got text color. What about text size? Well, text size is more or less exactly the same. So the default size of the text is one. And as we increase that number, 1.5, 2, 2.5, the size of the text gets much bigger. 
So let's go ahead and start over here. Build in play from sample four. Bigger, bigger, and bigger, depending on the size. Again, starting with one and getting bigger based on the, the initial size of the text within the web browser. So text style, text color, text size. Okay, three different macros. That seems fairly useful at first glance. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we can chain these together. In fact, we can do something called adding them together or what we might call concatenation in a more technical context. So we can say, hey, I want some text that has this text style in this text color with this text size. All together is one thing. Because it produces a changer value, a changer value is a type of value. When we talk about variables, we talk about them as the value of the variable. A changer is a kind of value, which means we can put it in a variable. This is an extremely powerful idea within Harlow. So let's move to example five and see what this looks like. So I say temporary variable style element to text style plus text color plus text size. So I can add these all together or chain them together if you prefer that idea of one changer after another changer after another changer producing a single change combined all of these together. And then because this is a value, I can apply it to a hook which again seems strange, but it's a changer value, which is also associated with macros, which is where, again, understanding changers has started to become a powerful idea for us within Harlow. So the result of this right here is all of these different macros. So a macro value, but a value nonetheless, so we can put it in a variable, and then we can do this weird thing right here and put a variable in front of a hook which because the result of all of this will in fact be a macro, which we know we can associate with hooks. So let's go ahead and jump over to example five. This will be gray, have emphasis, and appear large. So the power of changers, and we will be looking at this across a number of videos, but the real power of changers is the ability to combine them all together, set up a variable because it's just a resulting value, and then apply that value in new and interesting ways. So because the result is a macro, is a changer value, we can apply it to a hook. In the same way that we saw when we worked with the button macro, that it needed a link or anything that produced links so in the same way that the button macro allows us to embed one thing and the next and the next, working with changer macros and changer values allows us to start to combine all these things together. So our code is getting more complex as we're building here and moving into a different category of things within Harlow, but we're still using the exact same ideas, still relying on the same general patterns, but now combining them in more advanced ways. So for this video, looking at text size, or looking at text style, that is, text color and text size, three different macros, each of which can be used separately and applied to hooks as we saw, but because they're all a kind of macro called changer within Harlow, we can chain them together. The emphasis of G and <laughs> vowel sounds within my English voice here, right? Changer with a G changes things in chaining with the vowel sound there, putting them together, allow us to now start to create styles in one passage or in one section of a story that we may want to apply to future passages by applying them to hooks. So we're still using macros and hooks, we're still using the set macro, we're still using variables, but now we're starting to again get more complicated as we dig into changers from this video and within this subsection of the larger video series, focusing on changer macros within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.